Hi, Graham from Wobbly Cogs Workshop here again and in today's video I'll show you how I made this Bioshock inspired letter rack. The design of the Bioshock game world is essentially art deco with elements of steampunk. I quite like the art deco style and as I just finished immersing myself in a game world filled with it, I thought it was high time I tried to make something in that style. This project was a bit of an experiment for me and as you'll see it didn't go completely to plan. Fortunately I was able to save the piece and I think the end result is actually quite good. Start by finding a scrap of timber about 120mm wide, 20mm thick and 400mm long. Measure and cut off roughly 120mm, this will form the front of the letter rack. Next cut off a section the same size for the back and finally cut off a section roughly 100mm long for the base. When you have all the pieces cut, quickly stand them up together to make sure they hold the size of letters or paperwork you expect. Clean up the cut edges first with a plane and then with a cabinet scraper. Don't worry too much about breaking out the edge while planing as most of it will be cut away to achieve the final shape. Now for the design. Divide the front piece into five equally sized sections and then working out from the centre create 20mm steps in each column. Hold the piece in the vise and cut away the scrap. Take care to cut accurately as cleaning up any excess timber from this step is quite time consuming. Now for the fun part where I bring the piece to life. I was really surprised how much of a difference putting in some three dimensional detail made. It went from boring and flat to alive. Clamp a straight edge board along the line for one of the outermost columns then using a shoulder plane create a groove 10mm deep. Once you have the groove made, take out the rest of the waste with a block plane. Check the depth as you go and refine as necessary. You'll probably find that the two planes will leave you with a small ridge. Clean this up with either a cabinet scraper or sandpaper. Now move the guide block over to the next column and repeat the process except for making the groove only 5mm deep. When that column is finished, flip the piece around and repeat the process on the other side. Despite my best efforts with cutting the columns, I was left with a fair bit of clean up to do. I first pared away a small amount of excess material with a sharp chisel, then I used some sandpaper folded over a cabinet scraper to finish the job. With the front complete I turned my attention to joining it to the base. I considered just gluing it as that would be more than strong enough for what it would be doing. I then contemplated using some small dominoes and finally I settled on making work for myself by making a box joint. A box joint has got to be one of the hardest to make by hand as it's very unforgiving. The slightest error in position you end up with a gap or the two pieces not fitting together. To make matters even harder for myself I decided to try and cut it using my new mortising chisels rather than the router. Anyway, start by laying out the size of the front and back pieces on the base and then trace the shape of the front. Extend the front moulding lines all the way to the back and then indicate the waste material. Thank you. 
Clamp the base and the vise and carefully saw away the waste material, then lay out for a box joint. I decided to go for the base end grain showing each step on the front, but the opposite configuration would also work. Your box joint should be half the width of the step in the moulding centred on the step. Repeat the process for the back joint. To cut the box joint on the back piece, first clamp it in the vise and then lay the base on top of it. Using a sharp pencil, transfer the box joint from the base onto the back. Don't forget that the lines you've drawn show the edge of the wood that should remain at the end. Now it's just a matter of tirelessly chopping out the waste material. The process is the same as for the base. First saw down the lines and then chop out with the chisel. In this clip you can see me using my new mortising chisels. They allowed me to take bigger cuts but unfortunately I didn't consider that would mean I dented the edge of the piece. And now for the really tedious bit of box joint cutting, cleaning everything up so that it's a nice tight fit. There really is no easy way to do this if you want a tight fit. You simply have to slowly power away a little timber at a time and repeatedly test fit until you have a joint you're happy with. The fitting process is exactly the same for the front piece but you have to be a lot more careful because parts of it are now quite thin. Unfortunately I went at it like a bull in a china shop and managed to split the piece along the edge of one of the steps. Fortunately the split didn't go all the way through and it was on the inside so I was able to perform an invisible repair by forcing glue down into the split and then clamping it overnight. Just here though you'll spot mistake number two. Rather than waiting for the squeeze out to dry I wiped it off with a bit of tissue. I was planning to sand the piece so I thought this wouldn't be an issue, but the glue that got onto the end grain was sucked deeply into the piece and affected the final finish. Here's the final fit of the front joints. They aren't bad, but they aren't exactly great either. The one on the first step on the left is probably the worst, with some on the right even achieving a none too shabby. Although I wasn't over the moon with the joints, I decided to press on and sanded the inside faces of the piece. As you can see, this has cleaned up the glue residue nicely. Shame I hadn't considered the end grain. With the inside sanded, it's time for the glue up, every woodworker's favourite bit of the job. I decided to repair the less than perfect joints during the glue up by using the dust and glue trick. I've used this technique a few times with varying levels of success. I was confident of it working here because the wood is moderately dark and the glue is naturally a fair match. Once all the surfaces are coated with glue, put the piece together and correctly align everything before holding it in the vise. Grab a piece of scrap timber and start to make some dust using 80 grit sandpaper. You'll need a surprisingly large amount of dust as it's difficult to cram into the holes. Once you have a pile of dust, mix it with enough glue to make it workable. The less glue you use, the better will be the final match to the piece. When it's mixed, use your fingers to cram the filler into the gaps. Make sure you work fast as this filler sets up quickly. If you've repaired the joints on the back of the piece, you can power sand everything to a nice finish. The front requires hand sanding though, so get some fresh 80 grit sandpaper and remove any excess filler. 
uh, using a higher grit, say 220, give everything a good sanding and then vacuum off any dust. Finally, apply a finish. I'm using an old can of Osmo Poly-X oil, as I like the finish it gives. It's a sort of cross between an oil and a polyurethane. A couple of light coats is all that's needed and then the piece is done. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more workshop videos and don't forget to share and like. If you have any thoughts or suggestions please leave a comment below. Bye till next time.